Today I've got something that will knock your socks off. I know that we're always looking for efficient ways to streamline our workload so we can focus on the kids. I know that we're often tired and run out of ideas. I know that we all could use a personal assistant now and again. That's where ChatGPT comes in. With ChatGPT, you can create a solid foundation for a comprehension-based lesson quickly and easily with just a few basic prompts. Want to know what those prompts are? Stick around as I show you all the ChatGPT prompts you need to go from lesson introduction to assessment. My name is Scott, and you're watching Immediate Immersion, where we're all about comprehension-based instruction in the modern language classroom. We'll be right back. Now, I want to preface this video by saying that ChatGPT is just a tool, and you shouldn't use what it gives you right out of the box. You'll need to read through the results, personalize it, and tweak it for you and your students. Although ChatGPT can't do all the work for you, it can do the heavy lifting, saving you time and energy so you can focus on teaching your students. Let's get started. Here we are in ChatGPT's website. If you don't already have an account, you can create a free one quickly and easily, and you'll be right here on this page. We're going to go through step by step on how to create a complete comprehension based lesson using just ChatGPT. But remember, you'll need to tweak the responses to make them personalized for you and your students. So let's get starting with our conversation questions. So we're going to go down in here and we're going to type in the following prompt. Write 20 conversational, if I can type, questions using the verbs wants, goes, has, and likes for true beginners. These questions should be in the present tense and in Spanish. So as you see, it's spitting out the 20 questions that we asked. And we have the basics for starting conversations using those focus verbs. But then we're going to continue. We're going to create, we need a song that goes along with what we're teaching in these verbs. So we're going to write, please choose five different popular Spanish songs that use the above verbs. The lyrics should be school appropriate. Now, let me forewarn you when you get this, they don't always check all of the lyrics. So let's see right here, they're um, suggesting Despacito. They always suggest Despacito, but that's not a school appropriate song. So make sure that you vet the songs that you get, but at least it gives you um, a list that you can start with, some basics. And so it finishes here. It gives you some example lyrics as well. And then you can do some more research to find out if any of these or which one would be best for you and your students. Okay, the next part, we need a story script. So let's start with this prompt. It's a little bit longer of a prompt. Please write a five sentence story using the above verbs for a true beginning Spanish student. The story should be written in the past tense and should be in the following format. One, there was a character. Two, oh no, Oh, no. 
there was a problem. Three, state the problem. Four, have character go somewhere to solve the problem, but fail. Five, have the character go somewhere else and solve the problem. The script should be in Spanish. The main character should be, uh, let's see, what shall we do? Hmm. An iPhone named Iggy. And I see I've got a typo there. It's always best to fix your typos before you set it through. And I see I've got a couple of them. Let me go ahead and fix those. Sentence story. Okay. Now, with ChatGPT, it is a conversation, so it does remember the things that you have taught, told it beforehand. So we're going through here. It's going to give us our prompt. And usually the first one is a little bit too complicated for a true beginner. So I'll show you how to follow up and make it more uh, what you need. And there we go, getting our response here. So we can look through it. Había un personaje, I know, I know. Vi un problema, el personaje era un iPhone llamado Iggy. Iggy quería escuchar música, pero no tenía auriculares. Entonces Iggy fue a la tienda de electrónicas para comprar auriculares. So it's a little bit longer than what I would like. So I'm going to put in here, please simplify above story. And so we get a little bit more simplified that we can now use as a beginning story. And if you need to adapt this to a different level of class, like a level two or level three, then you can just ask it other to adjust it accordingly. So there's your story script. Now we're going to get some questions to help develop that story script. So I want to write, please, write 20 questions in Spanish that would help develop the above story into a longer, more detailed one. So here we have 20 questions that we can ask while we are creating our story script to engage the students and make it a more fully dimensional story. Okay, so now we need to come up with a reading. So we're going to create an extended reading and we're going to use the following prompt. Please write a brand new story for um, novice low students using the above verbs. The story should be in past tense and include... What, Let's change this here. Include dialogue and be at least 500 words long. Please make the main character a toaster named, uh, let's see, Mo. The story should be in Spanish and written for novice low students. I know I've repeated some things in this prompt, but sometimes that helps it. The more detailed and concise you can be, the better your responses are from ChatGPT. Now, I like to use a completely different story for my extended readings. Other people like to use the actual class story, so you can change your prompt up if you like to use your class story.
and then it's not finished, so you click the continue generating until it does finish itself. Perfect. Now, I'm not gonna go and read through this. You can read through your own responses and adjust them accordingly, but you see where we're getting with this, that it was relatively easy to come up with an extended reading, and then you can tweak it as necessary. Now, the next thing I wanna do is create some embedded reading so we have some differentiation in there. So I'm gonna write, please rewrite the above story in five different versions. The first version would be the most simplest version with as few sentences as possible to tell the story. Each subsequent version should be a bit more complicated until you reach the final version of the story. And click the continue generating. So now you have five versions plus the original version to create your differentiated embedded readings. So it makes it real easy. Again, you want to read through all this, make adjustments. And if you need to, you can also ask some uh, follow up questions with ChatGPT to tweak it to your liking. If you want to change the tense, change it from third person to first person, all of that, you can just ask a follow-up question and ChatGPT will give you the results. Next, let's go ahead and create a listening practice. So I'm gonna go, this is gonna take two prompts to do. Please write a new story using the above verbs for a true beginner in simple Spanish. The story should be in past tense with a pencil named Pete as the main character. So we're gonna write this. This will be a listening practice that you can pre-record for your students to be able to answer questions about. So it gave us a nice little prompt here. Then I can add my second one in here. Please write 10 multiple choice questions in English with an answer key for the above story. Now, if you wanna leave them uh, open-ended, you can change your prompt to reflect that. But here it gave us 10 uh, questions that we can ask about that along with the answers. Now let's do a reading practice and it's gonna be a very similar prompt. So please write a new story using the above verbs for a true beginner in simple Spanish. The story should be in past tense be at least 500 words and include dialogue. The main character should be a dog named Tiny. So here you get a more complex reading because they can read it. And again, you can adjust it for the levels. I'm using for beginners so you can get an idea, but you can change it to your novice mids, novice highs, intermediates, and you can change the language, obviously, for the language that you're teaching. Now, our second prompt is to get those questions. Please write 10 multiple choice questions in English with an answer key.
So you can see right along here, it's giving us our questions and our answers, and we have got uh, a reading practice. Now you can repeat both of these prompts to get both a listening and a reading assessment. And if you want, you can make them open-ended questions rather than multiple choice, if that's what you would prefer. Now let's go on to a writing assessment. We can go, please write a writing prompt. Or let's say, please write five writing prompts that include the above verbs in English. So it's going to give us five different prompts and we can choose whichever one that we want them to use. Okay, so that's your writing assessment. And then for a speaking assessment, we can write, please create a speaking assessment based on the above verbs. And it gives us some choices here. And again, don't take these directly as they come out from ChatGPT. You wanna read through them. You want to tweak them. You may ask ChatGPT to tweak them for you, or you can manually tweak them um, to suit you and your students. So here we have got a couple of different options. They list them usually as parts, but I like to just choose whichever one that I would like to do and use that one. But it gives you some ideas, and I can tweak these ideas if... Um, I'm not happy with them. And last, I want to talk about creating a cultural reading. So the last thing prompt we can do is this. Please write a 500 word text in Spanish. Let's do this in, uh, oh, okay, Spanish. Describing an authentic Hispanic aspect. Now you can, um, if you know exactly what kind of culture you wanted to include, you can do that as well. But I like to just roll the dice and see what it comes up with. Please include the verbs listed above. The text should be written in simple Spanish. So here it's talking about the markets in Latin America. So you can see you get a very authentic um, reading that you can engage your students with. Again, read through it, fact check it, make sure it's what you want and it's the language that you want. You can swip, switch out some of the verbs if some of them are more complicated for your students. Or you can even ask it to, let's just for example, please rewrite in even simpler Spanish if it was too complex. And you get a really, really short version. So there's lots of things that you can do with ChatGPT um, to, to help you create a good foundation, a solid foundation for your comprehension-based lessons. But remember, you need to tweak it and personalize it for you and your students. Don't just use it out of the box. Now, if you found that helpful, you'll definitely want to hear about Immediate Immersion's CI Summer Camp. This summer, we are interrupting your summer for a 10-part webinar series to get you ready and pumped up for the upcoming school year. I know, I know. Who wants to think about back to school in June? But seriously, our CI Summer Camp is for both experienced and beginning CI teachers who want to get a jump start on the school year and be confident and prepared once that first day arrives. CI Summer Camp is currently on sale for just $77 until Sunday, June 25th. Then the price goes up to $97. That's a whole lot of PD for such a small price. And don't worry, if you can't participate live, we're recording all of the sessions and you'll have access through August 31st of 2024. So if you're ready to join me and other like-minded CI teachers and get ready for your new batch of kids, head on over to mm.us slash summer camp and register today. Oh, and I almost forgot. 
I've created a handy dandy chat GPT prompts guide with all of the prompts talked about here. You can get it at mm.us slash chat GPT. Isn't that awesome? Now thanks for watching and don't forget to like this video. Subscribe to our channel for more teaching inspiration and hit that notification bell so you never miss a new video. Want to watch more? Here's another great video on teaching in the modern language classroom. Until next time, happy comprehensible input.